Earlier, we heard how 81-year-old Barbara Darlow had been paying for fake services on her two Dyson vacuum cleaners for over seven years, costing her almost £800. To hear that this company wasn't with Dyson's, I just couldn't believe it. I'd been paying Dyson's as far as I was aware. So, who was I paying this money to? Who was getting this money? The answer is Excel Servicing Limited. Their fake Dyson services have ripped off thousands of customers like Barbara. Today, a team of police and trading standards officers led by Sophie Davies has just executed a warrant at the company's offices and call centre. They hope they can bring a stop to this fake Dyson operation. Inside, the police have spotted the company director, Tom Scoffin. All right, can you take his phone off him and make sure he doesn't turn it off? Okay, well, okay. we'll be down at Allen Drive Police Station. That's where he'll be going to. Yeah. He's immediately arrested, put in the back of a police van, and taken to the station. Along with another member of staff. With their boss taken into custody, the call centre workers appear confused at what's going on. Going or staying? <laughs> what they do know is that they're being shut down. When we went in initially, the staff were quite unhappy, mainly because of the loss of pay they were going to receive. But at the end of the day, if they're targeting elderly and vulnerable people, that should be their primary concern uh, and complying with the law. So, yes, they were quite unhappy, but we still have a job to do. February 2014 Commission. Not commissions. The call centre is a much larger professional looking setup than the team were expecting, employing around 30 staff. They suspect this is where they made cold calls to rip off customers like Barbara. This is one of the part of one of the scripts that we've actually seized, and as you can see at the beginning, there's no reference to who they actually are. Um, it says it's a call regarding Dyson, do you still use the Dyson? So they're making the assumption you already have one. Having followed the script and convinced the customers they were genuinely calling from Dyson, visits would be arranged by engineers to carry out a fake Dyson service. Um, you don't pay anything over the phone, you pay it after the service has been carried out. And we know that allegations have been made in homes and about unnecessary servicing being carried out, which uh, no doubt they will charge for. And it's not just the scripts. As the team search the building, they find a store full of what appear to be used Dyson vacuum cleaners and a range of spare parts that the team suspect could be fake. With the suspected fake parts seized, mounds of paperwork bagged and tagged and the call centre shut down, it's turned out to be a good day for Sophie and the team. So today we've managed to arrest the director. We've also seized in excess of 100 um, evidence bags. So um, it's quite successful in terms of evidence gathering and the individuals we wanted. Back at Trading Standards, Collins managed to have a closer look at some of the parts fitted to the Dysons they've seized and he's far from impressed. Basically, it's a cheap copy of a, uh, a Dyson uh, filter, which cost a couple of pounds, bought over the internet. Very poorly constructed by comparison to a, 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 an original component. XL Servicing Limited were charging customers around £40 to change these filters. However, Dyson say their genuine filters need just a wash. It's just an out and out con basically, somebody's paying a premium price for something that isn't required and something which is likely to actually lower the performance of the, the machine that it's intended to, to improve. And, and just using these, these parts in validated warranties if, the, if, the, if there was a, it was a relatively new machine. Charlie Park and Dyson fears putting these cheap rip-offs into working Dyson vacuums could do more harm than good could be a danger um, depending on the parts that they're they're changing you know, these these products are um, connected to the mains electricity so any parts that's fail that could expose live wires or any materials that could be flammable you know that's that's going to put consumers at risk anything that um, is being put into a vacuum cleaner that aren't ours we can't vouch for and could cause problems to the to the vacuum cleaner um, at the expense of the the owner 
The items they seized in the raid, along with the testimonies from a string of ripped off customers, have given Colin and the team enough evidence to build a case against the man they arrested earlier, Tom Scoffin, the director and the brains behind this fake Dyson service operation. And the scale of his bakery was gobsmacking. It, it was huge, basically. The, 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 in terms of the numbers of customers, there, there were 68,000 customers of, of the business who, who paid for things that n didn't necessarily have to pay for at all. Uh, and in terms of turnover during the endowment period, it was well over uh, in excess of a million pounds. Exploitation of elderly, vulnerable people was the, 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 the prime focus of the business, if you like. It was, it was their business model was to tell lies and, and to, to take money off people who could often ill afford to, to take, uh, uh, to, to spend that sort of money. In court, the second man arrested during the raid was acquitted of any wrongdoing. But both Tom Scoffin and his mother, who was involved in the running of the company, were convicted of conspiracy to defraud and await sentencing. And I hope they get the book thrown at them. I really do. They don't deserve any mercy when they've conned all these old people out of their money. And some of them it's been, you know, every penny they've got. Charlie at Dyson is worried the fakers out there like XL Servicing Limited are tainting the reputation of the well-known brand. If they're getting a, a bad service from these companies, and um, it sounds like that is often the case, that we don't like that reflecting badly on us if they think they're affiliated with us. Sadly for Barbara, being ripped off by this fake has knocked her confidence. I don't trust easily. I question everything before I even think of spending any money. And I think it's often when you have to do that, um, when you've always trusted people, that's what it does, it makes you mistrust people. And that's awful. This is not the first time Charlie's seen Dyson targeted by the fakers. And sadly, he doesn't think it will be the last. Yeah, as a company, we take it very seriously. That there are other fakers out there, apart from this company. Um, we, need, we want our owners to be, have a high awareness of it, and we want to be trying to um, work, work with everyone we can to stop these people um, continuing these services. Here's some tips from Dyson to help you steer clear of companies trying to rip you off by offering fake Dyson services. The advice I give to our owners is that we would never contact them and we'll always wait for them to contact us. So if anybody is contacting them, their chances are they could be a faker. We, um, uh, we will offer them the service and the support that they need, but we won't be cold calling them. And secondly, if anybody is turning up to service their machines and they're not a Dyson engineer, who will be driving a Dyson van and be in a um, Dyson uniform and have a Dyson pass, then I would um, urge them not to use that service. Yeah, I'd advise any Dyson owner to, to check if they get any sort of call with Dyson. They can contact us through our website. All of our products have the call center number, the free phone number on the product. So contact us if in doubt at all, and we can advise them on, um, on what to do.